Well, it's it's not like how it makes it sound. It's like funny. You love the title? Thanks, me too. I couldn't figure out what, like, object for the KFC, KFC oven. It's not very good because they probably fry all their food. But it's all I could think of. That's what I did. I'm glad you like it. Can you hear me? One thing, I am on Mac OS Catalina, which it says that Mac OS Catalina does not support 32-bit games, but I opened it up and it started working, so maybe it works? Like, I don't know. Wait, can you guys hear me? I'm glad to know you guys are always there for me to tell me whenever I'm talking or not, especially when I ask. It's so nice. I really appreciate it. I'm going to go grab water real quick. I'm not that back layer, not a boiler. 
beans. Did you hear me say beans? I know it's audible. Mom said it's audible. So that should be fine. Eight minutes. Oh, God. I've been taking too long. Mom. What the heck? You were just talking. Oh, yeah, but it's so audible. Like, if, if you know that, like, I'm streaming, then you shouldn't just say random stuff. <laughs> Sorry. You hear me. Excellent. That is ideal. So, today we are playing uh, the KFC Dating Simulator, simulator thing. It's called, um, it's a really long name. I love you, Colonel Sanders, a finger-looking good dating simulator. Yep, that's it. Cute. Okay. Um, and big news, big boy news. I have a face cam now, which is was going to be a Nikon camera, but Nikon decided that they're going to only make it to where you can use it as a face cam if it's one of their new models, and I'm not going to buy a whole new camera just to do a face cam. So it's using the crappy webcam from the, uh, from the Mac, and it makes my hair look like really thin. I swear it's not. Also, my hair is not as red as it looks. Um, I guess, yeah, whatever. Uh, if I go to Maine, ooh, watch out, boys. Okay, hold on. Yay, yeah, yay. Um, it's gonna be great. And, yeah, it might just not work, but it started working. So, either Steam is wrong, or Mac is wrong. I don't know. But if it doesn't work, then it's game over, because I'm not playing Minecraft again. It is so boring. So, yeah, you know, we'll see. Preparing to launch. Whoa, watch out, boys. Hey, it's me, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> Ew, that is loud. I want to see how loud this is. It's not audible. Hold on. Pause. Please pause. Hold on. Pause. This music's intense, so... Oh, hold on. I gotta shut myself up. This music is intense, and I don't want you guys to miss it, so I gotta fix the music and then open it back up again. Uh, wait. Okay. That might fix it. That might fix it. I swear it looks better in real life. My hair looks like it just disappears. So it's because I'm wearing a black shirt. Hold on. Is that better or worse? It's kind of bright. Hold on. Maybe a bit better. That's okay. That's a bit better, I think. It's less disgusting. Also, I know my living room is disgusting. I know. But that's just how it's going to be. Because I was too lazy to clean it up. Cool. Um, I'm going to just play like a song or something real quick just to see if it works. Um, no, I'm not doing that. I'll just check it whenever I actually play the game. Hopefully it works. Yay, cool. It works. It might be really loud. That is extremely loud. Jesus Christ. Hold up. Dude. That is... Oh my god, that is... Yeah, that's a lot.
I look really different. Yeah, that's me. I do look different. I got bangs and my hair got really long. And this light makes it look really, really red compared to how it actually is. I do look different. <laughs> I look quite funky. Okay. Uh, I gotta turn this down a whole lot. Uh, okay, this is how loud I talk, so if that's like there. That should probably be good. Let's hope. And now we'll start it again. Third time's the charm. Oh no, it's not buffering. This seems manageable. Is this really loud? <laughs> Cutie. Is this a good volume? Cause I don't really know, honestly. Yo mom! Is that a good volume? Cool. It's not about how loud it is, it's about how the ratio between my voice and the game music is. Because if I talk, it needs to still be heard. I have so many mixed feelings about this game already. Do what? Cool. Seems fine. You have so many mixed feelings. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's really weird. And it's even weirder because it's actually made by KFC, which makes sense because no one can just use Colonel Sanders if they're not KFC. But it's one of those rare things where a corporation does something really cringy and it ends up being really cool instead of extremely cringy. New game. Please work. <gasps> What's my name? Wait. See, my name's cool and all, but there's this one streamer, and anytime I say anything in chat, my name is Uglasa Dilemma, obviously on here, but then she only reads the Emma at the end, and she thinks my name is Emma, and I kind of love it. And no one knows what this name is, but I'll do my name, my actual name, Lonnie, for now. And then I can just, if I suddenly want to change my online name to Emma, there we go. I'll just do it, you know, no big deal. Oh no. It's not promising, guys. Oh wait. Hey, see it works! You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. This place is so cute. Is that BTS? Ew. Why is there a boy band on her wall? You could just use the brand new, not all Pop character, General Beechers. That's great. I love it. No, General Beechers. It's so cute. You know, if I made a dating game, I'd make a dating game about dating general beaches. Not gonna lie. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. Now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Okay, that chicken is not gonna do it for me. <gasps> I can set the clock out the window. You slept through the school. Oh no. No, I messed it up. <laughs> you slept through the school year and gave up on the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to meet Colonel Sanders. <laughs> I already failed, guys. That's the end of the stream. Game over already. You might not be cut out for this. Imagine failing the game as soon as you start playing it. And then it buffers, and I think the computer's gonna crash, and then it doesn't crash. You sleep softly, yada yada yada, warm glow apartment. Peaceful, know it forever. Wake up, culinary school. And then I stack the clock. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the, at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. 
See, I want to daydream a bit, but like, I don't want to miss the whole school year again. <laughs> it's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities and you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. <gasps> oh, it's steaming. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Yikes, you're in such a hurry, in fact. You forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Ew, gross. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Oops, that's unfortunate. Well, it's all good now. What the heck is that? Don't ask me what that is because I got no clue, bro. My bad. I think when I had to change the volume on my uh, mic to those little buttons, you know? I pressed the mic button. Oof. Anyways, you guys read it, it's fine. With University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning's mo uh, famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. You know, three-day semesters don't seem like a very good idea for good learning. A sweet girl, Miriam, but, a, but has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Okay. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Hmm, I'm gonna pep talk her. I feel like she needs it. She's so nervous. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? Oof. The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. Oh no, what have I done? I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. Aw, that's so, that's so adorable. I love her. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. <gasps> I think I'm her, guys. I think I'm Miriam. Can you believe I cut them myself? This hits way too close to home. Jeez Louise. You can definitely believe it. Oh, yeah, hers look bad. I, uh, I can't believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey. It's... Oh god, what a terrible way to spell a name. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She is totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Oh, that's so annoying. Wait, hold on, I'm gonna type something in chat. Because there was this um one name that I saw a meme about where someone wanted to name their kid Rifle and it's spelled like this. And it's just it's just depressing. Ashley, that is... Ew, that's what a terrible name. Hello, Ashley. 
Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. She just called me chicken shins. You leave Lonnie's shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. If anyone here knows what perfect shins looks like, it's us. Yeah, Miriam, you get it, girl. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can't you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rockin' glutes. Ahem, Van Van. You <laughs> Ew. You rang rang. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. What is, what is his shirt? That's so gross, this guy. Oh crap, I forgot to do a thing with the stream title. It seems like a really weird thing to remember right now, but I knew that there was um, a thing I wanted to do. Put a uh, uh, exclamation point emotes in chat. It should work because then you can download a a Chrome extension, and it lets you. It gives you more emotes. It's unimportant, but I can also add my own emotes if I got someone or myself to like draw them, and then you can use emotes that are like special, but. I don't have to make people subscribe for emotes because it's stupid. It's pretty rad. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand us our diplomas now. K-pop emotes? Uh, those are cute too, but no, there's, um, I think I put the link in for... I put the link in for two different emote sites, but one of them is kind of trashy. The other one's good. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there is just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Theo, what is it? I don't know what he wants. Do you guys want to see Theo? Oh my god. Wait, what do you want, puppy? I don't know what he wants. Let's go, Miriam. Wait, Theo, come here. Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Hi, Theo. Look at him, he's so cute. Yeah. Okay, bye, puppy. Doggo? Yes, doggo. See you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Mm. How do I make that sound effect? I'm not going to. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, uh, that should be the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you? My name is Pop. I was named for my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> That's so cute. Hi, Pop. I'm Lonnie. So... Are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. I is it just me or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. He was being mean. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. 
game is so cute. Ah, popcorn is or the bucket, the chicken bucket is the applause button. A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at a podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Oh my god. Hey, I'm gonna go eat. I'll be back. Okay, bye Allison. Have fun eating food. It better be good. You can't eat. Don't put disgusting food in your mouth. Doggo again. I know, right? This one's a little bit cuter than Theo, but not a whole lot. Sprinkles. Oh, his name is Sprinkles. He's got little glasses on. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. It sounds like USLA or UCLA. Yeah, it sounds like UCLA. That's funny. <laughs> Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy. No, I may be cute and a little unfluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof! Ah! Look at him! He's a little pose! That is simply cute. That is simply amazing. Dogs are great, Lance. I completely agree. What? A cute dog is a professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog that is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Okay, hold on. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Give me a second. <laughs> Is it going to be his big entrance? No, it's not. It's just pop. I'm chilly. Someone close the window. And then dot dot dot. He walks in. Oh boy. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland... Colonel Sanders interrupts Sp Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Harland, please, call me Colonel. Ooh, okay. Colonel Sanders... Wait, should I give him like a uh, kind of deep country accent? See, I feel like I kind of want to do voices, but I'm really bad at voices. And like, it might be kind of cringe. So tell me if I do voices or not. Colonel Sanders is looking pretty good, not gonna lie. I mean, I gotta agree with you there, dude. That's kind of the whole game. <laughs> A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of de desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Dude, look at his waist compared to his shoulders. How? That's insane. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. Ashley, in this over here, must be sweaty sweats a lot. Oop. Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melt into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Dang, they're so mean. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. Oh, look, she looks so angry. <laughs> you two both know my name. We're in the same, we were in the same kindergarten class. And what is it with all your really weird insults? <laughs> Besides, when Lonnie sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Ew. Ugh. Ick, dude. You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Okay. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Am I gonna shake his hand? Oh my god, guys. Prep me up. Well, howdy. This classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. <laughs> Please, use my handkerchief. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Oh my god, guys! Colonel Sanders is talking to me! Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Okay, if I take it, it might seem kind of rude to accept it, but if I don't take it, 
doesn't move okay being sweaty and disgusting. So I've really got to... Hmm, I'm going to take it. You stretch out your hand, and Colonel Sanders places a fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful. You hesitate to... Oh, that's how I was reading in Colonel Sanders' voice. The main reason I like the other guy is his star pompadour. That is the best hairstyle after all. Dude, I've got to... I'm trying to figure out if I should agree or decline. I've got to... I've got to disagree. I've got to disagree, dude. Because, I mean... Maybe the second best hairstyle, but the best hairstyle is the goatee and the mustache. I mean, come on. That's obvious. <laughs> Uncultured. Just kidding. It's so beautiful, you hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Smelled? Smelt? Smelled. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary aca um, academy, academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. <gasps> I would love there to be really adorable tiny food sprinkles. I would love it. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Hold on. Theo, nobody likes you. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Oh, I remember this dude. I don't have anything. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss. Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue... You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school. He was my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Oof, awkward. <coughs> oh, give me a second, guys. I gotta let my dog out. Theo! So Be back, boys. Does no one remember me? I'm. You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Oh, look how angry he's getting. His little tail, his little arms. He's like, cute, dude. Adorable. Let that be a lesson for you students that hardness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. On wheels? You turn to see the student Sprinkles is uh, referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> Hold on, my computer bugged out. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, he's so cute, look at him. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Wait, did he like, make a joke? But we can't understand it because he's a... Robot? Sprinkles walks into the classroom as everyone stands in as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hold on. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking kind of better care of yourself. Aww. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Hmm. Beef treat, rubber ball, or chicken snack? Man, I want to give him the chicken, I feel like, since it's like KFC and it's like chicken and everything. But at the same time, I think whenever I watch someone else play a little bit of this game, he gave him the chicken. So I don't want to subconsciously choose it just because I've watched it before. So I'm gonna give him the rubber ball. I think rubber is cute, like a little, like a little tennis ball. 
You reach beneath your apron and return with a rubber ball in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. He tosses the ball and he bounds after it, grabbing it in his mouth and swinging it from side to side before dropping it. Aww. The thrill passes quickly. It's not clear if that endeared you to him or not. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Lonnie, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has climbed to the seat next to me if you're interested. <gasps> I have to choose? Okay, I'm gonna go up next to Miriam because if I sit next to Colonel Sanders, I might seem too eager and you don't wanna freak them out, you know? And also Miriam would be extremely hurt if I sat by Colonel Sanders. You move to take your seat by Miriam. I'm so glad to have you near me, um, to have you near me to support me through this class. Of course, we're Miriam, we're BFFs, dude, of course. <laughs> that's literally what I just said. That's good thinking. I know, big brain, big brain. Of course, you're my best friend. Who else would I sit by? Colonel Sanders? He has such a magnetic personality, and there's a seat open right next to him. If you had sat there, you might have gotten to know him a little better. I know. I'd never sacrifice our friendship. Besides, I'm sure I'll get a chance to talk to him later in the semester. I've got three whole days. That's like a lifetime. Huh? No, it's not. So you say, but now that Miriam mentions it, that Colonel Sanders is just so darn dreamy. Dang right, dude. Dang right. As soon as you settle down into your seat, the professor makes an, annou uh, an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. Yay! A quiz about me! This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell, you me, will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. I mean, obviously, right? It's cooking. That's right. Forest is the tree as chicken is to feather. That's right. Wow. I'm like a genius. They should accept me in like Harvard already. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork, a meat tenderizer, or a spork? See, I know the answer is spork because they've been mentioning sporks, but I wonder what happened if I got one wrong, you know? I'm the most efficient, so it's obviously spork because it's efficient. That's right! What food is best for a broken heart? Camel meat? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt, or a pancake that looks like a silly face? Probably the top one, because it's like, put love in your food, and so like anything you know. That's right. <laughs> is Sprinkles a good boy? <gasps> he is a talking dog who teaches at a culinary school. He is the best boy. Yes, he is. That's right. Your total score is 5 out of 5. Perfect. Wow, be honest. Did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you, you tally your score. He's impressed. <gasps> Guys, he's impressed with me. Oh my god. I know we just met, but I have to confess. Oh, I have to do his accent. I know we just met, but I've got to confess. That's such a bad accent. <laughs> I think you have a beautiful brain. Aww. Hot diggity, Lonnie. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. Nice. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! <gasps> Bro, I'm so hungry. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be your lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was out of folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was. It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I. Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. Oh my God, just say 
thing. She said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. She made an aha sound. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sanders has a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled higher, huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you, and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble, as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I've been developing a secret technique for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You know, guys, I've got to admit, I've got to admit something. I've never eaten KFC. Ever. Ever. And this makes me want it. <gasps> Mom, we should order some KFC. I've never had it, though. We should order some. For the game. Well, Oh, I'm playing the KFC dating submit. Look at this hunk of a man. <laughs> I don't care about the real one, I care about the anime one. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Psha! Nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case, uh,. One of those ingredients is, a uh, poison. Got him. You've never had KFC either? Twinsies. I'm glad I'm not alone. That'd be sad. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. Ooh, I'm about to pop my... I'm about to, I'm about to pop my elbow. Ow! Okay. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley is prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just, like, writing in my diary. Dear Diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness with, with, and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants them all to herself. She could not have her man. KFC can be good, but it depends. Depends on, like, the place, or is it just, like, kind of random? Sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's terrible. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any. I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There is enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food transports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Do I focus my mind and meditate on this moment, try and identify every flavor, savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart, or swim towards the light? Dude, I was going to use the little one, but Swim Towards the Light is so funny and strange that I kind of want to do that one. Somewhere up ahead, a bright light beckons you. The flavors are so intense, you become wrapped up in them. Unable to resist, you reach towards the light. It grabs your hand and pulls you closer, closer. Until your fingertips connect with the end of everything. What? Dude, am I meeting God? You are forever lost in the land of tender fried chicken bliss. Your mind dissolves. There is no lying now. There are, <laughs> there are only herbs and spices. Though Miriam tries to revive you, she cannot. Oh my god, wait, did I just die? <gasps> Dude, there shouldn't actually be ways to die in a dating simulator. Don't start over. Please don't start over. That'd be so sad. Okay, thank goodness. <laughs> I'm gonna skip over the thing until we get to where I was before, because I don't want to read all that, obviously. Uh -huh. 
can't believe I died, dude. That's so sad. Okay, I'm going to the middle one. I want to think about Colonel Sanders. The flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love. For a man, for a flavor, are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. I approach him. <gasps> Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I was wondering if I could... I talked too fast. Colonel, I was wondering if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow show you. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha ha ha. How bold to come out and I ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. <gasps> What's my secret? What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give up, give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got Maxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. No, but crap, I missed it. It said, I use, um, I'll try to click on it to see if I can see what it said. You was saying, just one, if you can't tell anybody, I use blank, whatever, you know. Blank, wow. You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. Ah, we can't even know. This is so sad. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Meg him? Not our opinions. Um, neg him to show your own strength. Wow him with a big idea to add an additional ingredient to really size things up. Or be modest, but thoughtful. I want to do one of the second two. MSG. <gasps> yes! Perfect! Why hadn't we thought of it before? This is crazy! Hmm... My computer's being bad. Hold up. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna... Hold on, I'm gonna let my computer turn it back on first and then I'll figure it out. Cool. Um, I'm gonna wow with a big idea. You know about that. I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. You decide to show them that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually have some thoughts on how you can improve it. Improve it? You want me to change my secret recipe and you think you can do better? Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? Heard of them? That's an entire garden of chili pepper varieties. Habanero, poblano, cayenne. But that's not the point. You can't just toss new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. Oh no! I made it mad! A recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. I didn't mean to... No! He's mad at me! Let this be the last time you improvise on my recipes, Bonnie. 
I'm headed back to class for the next lesson. Guys, I messed it up! No! <laughs> that certainly didn't go as planned. You better head back inside, but you wait a moment so that Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. You step into the mass cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they can need. Man, I should have thought about that. It was very obvious that you take offense to it. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we have to show our... Blah, 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 blah. Finally, we have to show our stuff. Wait a second. Oh, no. We have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not going to build anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. <gasps> she makes tiny food that's so adorable! Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is, me and you, that wasn't clear. <laughs> Wanna be my partner? Sure, Lonnie, I'll prepare a station. <gasps> okay, he's not that mad at me, since he did say that we'd team up. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hold on, I gotta do something real quick. What's my favorite fast food restaurant? Hmm. I mean, I don't really have a favorite restaurant as much as I have like a um, a favorite thing to get at pretty much any of them. I really like getting like the, either the chicken sandwiches or the spicy chicken sandwiches. But if I had to choose a favorite place, I'd probably choose Wendy's. Wendy's, because they have really good chili as well. Yeah, Wendy's. What about you? Hello, new partner. Beep boop zip zzz. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you have to pick for her. Friends duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? This is, this is um, a bit awkward. I'm gonna choose the robot dude though. Because I feel like Pop might be kind of annoying. I'm gonna choose Clank. Sorry, Pop. But I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. <laughs> it's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Hold on there, fella. We don't even have the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. Aw. Tissue, I hardly know you. Ah ha ha Clank judders and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Aw, Clank is so adorable. Oh, he's smiling. That's so cute. Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we'll be, we'll be keeping it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish, dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' minds or your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. Octopus is kind of gross. What was my answer? Oh, uh, my answer was, I, it's not like a big deal, which place it is, 
as long as they like chicken sandwiches or spicy chicken sandwiches. But if I have to choose a place, it's probably going to be Wendy's because they also have really good chili. What about you? Kiss the robot. Huh? No thanks. I will not. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm. I'm going to do the steak tartare, but the thing, the fact that it's easy might make him seem kind of unimpressed. But the potatoes and gravy is obviously the right choice because, you know, potatoes and gravy and like chicken. So I'll do the gravy, I think. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts the court look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. Just a second. I gotta look up what koi means. <laughs> koi definition. Bashful, shy, retiring. It doesn't make sense in the context. Whatever. Um, yeah. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? <gasps> Don't call me out, guys. We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. And you better keep, a, keep your fingers off of my man. What is this music? Oh god, I'm afraid. Did someone call for me? Uh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Lonnie's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of her classwork. That was the deal, remember? What is the music, dude? Wait. Is this just the music for this part? This is just the music, dude. This is weird. Colonel Sanders. Oh, God. This is really loud. Hold on, I can just... Yeah, I know, this is part of that. Okay. Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, hi there, Ashley, Van Van. Are we working in a quartet instead of a duet, du du duet now? Actually, no, it looked like Lonnie was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is, these young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you'll be able to get up to my level. Ha, doubt it. Ah, that's so mean. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of adm admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down like we cast complementary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel, if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks in your time of need. Or turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. I'm going to do Miriam because I don't want her to feel left out. And also if I like, if I pay too much attention to Colonel, he might think I'm like weird. You turn to Miriam and as soon as you find her, she senses it and looks back. This girl's friend in need radar is second to none. She immediately comes running over. Is somebody threatening my friend? I will destroy them. I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust via V. My skills as a chef, perhaps. But stepping away from this competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a loyal friend, but Lonnie is my partner for today's activity. He's putting me on his own! You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those, this is so loud. I can't.
John knows cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. Aww. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. <laughs> Distracted by the drama, you've already crashed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural p passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I wish, dude. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The result looks spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders, hold on. Colonel Sanders holds out a spork to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Aww. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then... Filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van, do something! Do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? This is so loud, dude. Hold on right there, Lonnie. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Icky. Can I have potatoes face? Van Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my, special my specialty. Braised tentacle of octopus in my silky seawater sauce. Plated on a battle axe blade, forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Pretty cool, not gonna lie. You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who will have first bite, and you will all look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed, and it may have turned in the process. The result could be toxic. Too late. It has been eaten. Oh my god, is he gonna... I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! He died! Dude, that's... That's not really that sad, because this dude's kind of annoying. Aw, how sad. Everyone... Date M KFC. Huh? Miss what? Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it's gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. <gasps> oh my god, wait, Pop, no. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, and then it almost immediately turns back to his oblivious self. Whoopsie. Tastes like poison. <laughs> The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. Oh crap. I have to let my dog back in real quick. Just a minute. That hurt. That hurt really bad. Ouch. Whoopsie. Date Mr. KFC. That's the plan, Stan. That is where I'm hoping this will end up. Cute little Colonel Sanders man. 
I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Yeah. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all is nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. <laughs> what? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. And pretty. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. Oh, wait, that was me. That was me. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them reminds me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him, and a way you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Ah! Oh my god. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Lonnie? Oh my god! There's something I need to tell you, dot dot dot. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I'd be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Aww. Hey, no, I, you... Shut up! I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a dude? You can't prove that. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh, poor student. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. Oh, <laughs> what the heck? The Spook Monster is here to fight a hero. Uh-oh, I think that's the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me, just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster. See? He does not sound too sure of himself, chat. Is he... Is he... Is he... Is it rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further... It's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? Attack- Oh my god, I'm actually fighting in a dating simulator? Um... I guess I'll attack? I should probably- mm, I should defend first. You decide to defend! Which defense will you choose? Trepidation. You close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint and see the sport monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. Fat, um, fat lot of good that defense did. <laughs> I'm gonna attack now. You decide to go on the attack. Cook with love or chow down? <gasps> I'm gonna chow down. Chow down does two damage. The fire in your belly makes you stronger. Spork monster is really feeling that threatened by your attack. Spork monster focuses their mashed mind and draws an energy from Mother Earth, Earth itself. They were larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Uh, I'm gonna defend again. You decide to defend. Which defense? Uh, buff up. You dump enough energy into your arms. Thinking back on all of the stirring you did in the kitchen as a child, your muscles go grow, go blah blah blah. Your muscles go super swollen, and you're ready to take on anything. Spork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork monster uses Utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. Oh no. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive the battle. Oh, I gotta attack then. You take on the attack. I'm gonna try cooking with love now. Cook with love does one damage. Okay, that's not better. 
Brooke Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. <laughs> pot pie power pinch. Pot pie power pinch does 10 damage. 10 damage? What? That's crazy. Spork Monster is defeated. You, you saved me. An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. I'm gonna spare him. It'll show Colonel Sanders that I've got like, not terrible, you know? You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. <gasps> what is it going to be? It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It, what? It's a book on magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. Rad. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. <gasps> Am I gonna faint? Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Oh my god, guys. Whoa. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. What a guy! You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel the covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Aww. <laughs> I'm absolutely not gonna say that, dude. That's so cringe. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. You wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? Dang, dude. This was like three hours and 45 minutes to finish all three days. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. <gasps> sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork with with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be um, I think I might like Clank. Ah! She's like, oh, she likes Clank. Oh my god, this is so cute. Like him, like like like. I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him, like like him. We got to talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Hold up. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No, but that does make sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to, and it was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. Wait. He was he was the convertible? How is he a com What? I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he can't be a convertible. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it so with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? We definitely connected yesterday. Yeah, we connected, bro. Ah ha 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 ha. Sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. 
Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? <gasps> no. She better not tell her. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. Okay. It's the summer while I was on vacation with my family. A lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said um, it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals. And that if, if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my, my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so you've stayed in touch. You know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. She will kiss the robot. Yeah, Miriam's gonna kiss the robot. It's so cute. Dude, also... Did she get high? Did some dude just give her, like... Weed? <laughs> what? Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, 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 it would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or from Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you predict Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? I am not telling the secret. That is so messed up. Colonel Sanders would never forgive us, so I'm gonna make a, make a fake ingredient. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know, how about... It was... I have Newt. I know, it sounds like some sort of witch's potion, but what can you do? I have Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've satisfied her, satisfied her curiosity, and she'll move on. However... However, she... That spice... The spice must flow. What do you mean? However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. Stand back or run to him. I'm gonna run to him. That's so cute. Oh no. You decided the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up into the back of a stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. <laughs> oh, it's like, ah, it's like Dead Poet Society. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. Oh no. However, your sudden movements surprise the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. Oh, jeez Louise. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh. Lonnie, I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat the name... My name three times, and that name is... But before he can continue, you suddenly awake. <gasps> I don't know his name. Aw, oh, jeez. You look find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He rides back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is that just his naturally... Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? <laughs> Walk out leading for a kiss. That's messed up. Compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. That, that's, like, funny. He'll like that. Maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up animals you don't know. It's hard to say who is in the wrong here. But one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. <laughs> That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, who are doing something bad. By the way they're, by the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. 
like counterfeiting rice recipes bad experimenting with restricted ingredients bad summoning a demon bad hold up You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure ready to handle this. Why don't you take a bee and mind your own wax, honey? That was not... That was not good. Um, tell them to stop acting immature. Act like you're not interested in them, but really try and get a closer look. Ooh, I'm gonna do the second one. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Man mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Oh no. Ahem. <clears throat> it's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. This is not good. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. Dude, chill. You finally get a good look at what it was they're hiding, and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the spork monster. Did they summon the spork monster? That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got Pop pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. Hee <laughs> hee. Before you can dig any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Do they be so hungry? Beep beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzzzt, womp. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Rude. Womp, womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Ha, got him. Or, bzzzt. Oh, look at his little angry face. He's so mad. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <laughs> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lo I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true star of the class today. He's painting. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very... Very tired. Aww, that's so cute. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. We are, Sprinkles. We are so ready. You try to take the Sprinkles a pat on the head, but he snarls at you. Oof. Sorry, sorry. I get a little work up, worked up if people try and pet me before I've had my morning coffee. Let that be a lesson to you. He's so cute. Sprinkles stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. It's German. Down, boy, down. Off toppen. That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, 
It's a chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson. Truly, you do. Which is why in 1776, the signing, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. <laughs> what? But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Lonnie? Naturally, this appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you want to sample? A glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? Mm, I'm gonna do the pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. Oh, this is good! My friend, no! This guy again? We're here to give you an important message. Ooh, you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is cough, cough. <coughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <coughs> Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through... <coughs> to fulfill... <coughs> the prophecy... I'm not going to keep coughing when you say cough. Cough, cough. You must... You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Aw, oh, man. You come to and find everyone is staring at you. The pepper was the last of its kind on Earth, and now it's gone forever. I ate? Oh no. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. You can just throw it up. We all make mistakes. I'm sure I'll have a good view. Someday? Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook off. The level of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Man, do they stop wasting everyone's time or step up and tell them, you're on. I'm going to demand they stop wasting time. Is everything a competition with you two? Yes. Yes. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn, to love, to learn to love. Sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your, your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? I need to eat. I'm going to have energy to, su to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere for constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already brought my own lunch. Lonnie, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. Oh, <gasps> that's so cute! My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down and a tartlet for dessert. Dude, it's baby food. That's adorable. It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, but it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports in court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer. Dang. 4-4 four, four, mouse. 4-4 four, four, mouse. 4 mouse. Yes. What is this? A lunch for ants? Oh, Jesus. Just then, a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Arrrr. I stand corrected. Fit for. Fit for a mouse. Yeah. If it's a battle you want, it's a battle you'll get. My bestie can beat, can best the best of them. Best believe it. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, You'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does well water boil at? That's right. But how would you have gotten in, into this school without knowing that? When you get to rub my furry belly, let that enticing offer, offer motivate you. <gasps> I get to rub his belly. Oh my god. 
you're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices? Um, 11 herbs? That's right. You may not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail wagging intensifies. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. By the way, reading it takes forever, and I might not read it if I run out of time. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Vigilance? I don't know. Oh. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it? I'm a dog. It's over the wrong head of some dog jokes. Gosh, I got the wrong. I got it wrong. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better forget the place where you went to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget what you, where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Sounds weird. Well, now would be a great time to harness energy. So where does it come from? That's right. The small town where dreams are born. This is your shot, and you're not going to miss it. Oh. You tried to shut up the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Um, sizzling? Nah! Don't make me get the spray bottle. How am I supposed to know this? You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Lonnie. <gasps> he believes in me. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you make watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many things will gravy? Um Crap. Grr. You're stranded on a desert island with only one desert um desert cookbook. What do you cook? What a hunk. No dude, I gotta focus on the stuff. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focusing on the challenge? You're falling behind. I keep thinking about Colonel Sanders. I can't answer them. What does this have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and del delicate baked biscuits? Woof, woof. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley's already become plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. Make up time, you toss your biscuit dough in a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ugh, yikes. Zbzz. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Or you may not have any hands, but Lonnie does. And a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. You, when you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Lonnie, no! <gasps> but you're not fast enough, and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There is no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Ow, dude, it made a weird sound. That freaks me out. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. No. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, oh, that's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Lonnie's injury. <gasps> Great, dude. Oh, crap. I'm going my computer off. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to the dessert. Under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that, is, that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. Hold on. Crap, my thing is messed up. I was going to ask Lonnie to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Dang. Inside, you find a delicate fried cheese um, croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry jelly. That is so pretty. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate sauce. 
Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? Oh, you. <laughs> As he places his sauce-covered finger into his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize the rage or put yourself between them. I'm going to internalize it. Your rage burns so intensely within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash, and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps forever. Oh, geez, that is not good. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried eyebrow. You run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. Aw, oh, he cares about us. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you ever? Do you think I've never failed the engine before? He's so sweet. That's exactly what I think. Just a second. Well, then think again. I wasn't always a man you see before you. Enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome for sure. I was born that way. Smooth. But I've walked the other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. Isn't that like the bones? <laughs> Why did he want to be an ob? That's a physician who specializes in childbirth. Why did he want to be an obstetrician? I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. Aw, poor guy. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it always, but it hasn't always been. Something this guy could really use a hug. I resolved that then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money could deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him. A burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Just as your moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening, shadowy presence. It's a spark monster! Sporko? It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but... I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, thanks, Borco. I'm glad that there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can always put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to the school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student, until one day some mean kid of the magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and then I was forever transformed. That's so sad. A magic spell book? Precisely. I procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and g g guile. G I don't know how to say that. If you need, if you don't need me, I mean, if you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It's not like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. 
Bonnie, together, I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. His hideaway? What's his hideaway? A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. <gasps> Dude, look how pretty his place is! It looks like you live such, a, such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. M mice is... What? Mice... Nice, dude. Good for you. Have you been working on it? Have you been working on any recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with. Trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps. Now you've got him right where you want him. So do you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret? Just for you. <gasps> I'm going to tell him! You decide that you're ready as your other be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. <laughs> the shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' um, Lux hideaway. Magnificent. Together you chat on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. <laughs> Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. That's kind of weird, dude, not gonna lie. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Coleslaw is in the middle for me. It can be good or bad. Yeah, you know, I'm not a big coleslaw type of girl. It's like, eh, yeah, it's not that good. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. No, I'm not gonna snoop. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate of memories and emotions. Okay, please look at the decorations in his house. That's very different. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. Ooh, I'm gonna click on the, uh... I can't see this one that well on the left side, so I kinda wanna look at this one. Oh, my chat's in the way. It's a little painting um, behind the chat. This must be where he keeps his secret recipe. <gasps> Don't look at it! You think for a moment. One number is important to Colonel Sanders, then it dawns on you. No, I didn't realize it was safe. This is really bad. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. No, I didn't mean to. Hmm, can chicken be prepared? Um, sashimi style? <laughs> no. No, it cannot be prepared sashimi style. That'll kill you. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. I'll look at his window. You gaze at the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then the ghost of student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see him in the middle of something? Ah, dude, you're so stupid. You open the window a crack and the ghost of student is swept out with a breeze. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Ew, that's so gross, dude. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silver in color. It's actually made of spun silver. <laughs> a scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool? Freshly searched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? No. It's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... I can't see what it says. <gasps> Take a closer look at the large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. 
There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lie the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. <laughs> Poor guy. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders. It's like an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. Tap on an item to discover more of the Colonel. I'm not going to be reading it every time. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks a bit like Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be cheers, cheersing them. That is not what the picture shows. If you look closely, you can see that there's a short inscription. I wonder who my friend Pete is. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports. Wait! <laughs> you figure that this must be the Colonel Sanders himself. That, or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who can make their own face a logo of a company they founded, am I right? You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on a corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on an item. Okay, yeah. The only last one is the open door. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off its hanger and try it on. You're putting on one of his suits? That's weird. The jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they mean? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he has been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually blend those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Aww. Oh crap, the jacket. You forgot to take it off. Um. Okay, do I make a big move? Do I tell him that I'm cold? Baby Colonel. I know, he's so cute with his little mustache and everything. Do I tell him I'm cold? Do I tell the truth? Or do I make a big move? Lance, tell me. What do I do? Because I'm bored of choosing. So it's your choice now. Okay, you did not answer. Oh well, I'm gonna make a big move. It's time. Hanging out at his house and wearing his jacket. It's so cute. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. This isn't that kind of game. Not that we blame you for trying. What do you mean? It's a dating simulator. A big move doesn't mean anything, what? Wait, what? Does big move mean something I don't understand? Ew, now I feel weird. But still. <gasps> What? That's silly. Do not turn me back at all the beginning stuff in his house. Rip. That was not what I meant to happen. <gasps> no, I'm all the way back here? Dang, dude. That sucks. And I'm going to click on everything and just redo it just in case it actually affects anything based on what I chose to look at. But it probably doesn't. But I figure, you know, might as well.
Okay, so I can't do the top one. Um, so either tell them I was cold or I fess up and tell the truth. I'm gonna say I was cold, that's cute. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to try to get a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots close to the fireplace. It's warm by the fire, why don't you come a little closer? Ah, this is so cute! Suddenly everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. You should be thinking about what you're going to cook. I should be home studying. No, dude, that's so lame. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the dorm. But the thought of losing Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you a pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Yes, Lonnie? Ah, this is so cute! I honestly think this might be the beginning of something wonderful. Oh my god. I think you're right. We should take things slow. Thank you, Colonel. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. What happened to studying? Dream sequence. You wake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. That is so cute. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about, blank. In some jurisdictions, blank isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast and your mouth waters the side of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. Ah, <gasps> yum, it's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. Oh, this is so cute, oh my god. So, would you say that we're the perfect match? Dude, this is adorable. How presumptuous. Ha ha ha. That's funny. My cuisine, cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Yeah, 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 what's up? Oh, can you hear me? <laughs> Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Take him down a peg or flatter him? I'm gonna flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. Oh my god. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window. Oh no, what's wrong? And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking to you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome um, with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. When able to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. <gasps> what? He just, she just left? There's still one more day of school after all. The University Cooking School, yada yada yada, waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... Because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on this, on this saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him. You better keep your titles turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, sure, yeah, I can get to know the guy, the little metallic guy. Come here. Come here. Come here. No, oh, Kinman. Come here. What are you doing? <laughs> Look at her. Hold on, I think so. Are you okay? It's okay. <laughs> oh no, I missed that. Okay, apparently they went skydiving. Did you just say skydiving as if it's a typical first day to go on? Um, with a talking pressure cooker? Dang, I missed some of the dialogue. 
And I'm not really sure where we stand. Wait, I missed all that. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however. Bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too. Back to Colonel Sanders' house, where I spent the night with him. You rat! Nothing happened, but the most my connection. Wow, there is. Miriam offers... Oh, to support you no matter what you do. Together with your best, you feel like you can do anything. When you arrive at school... Oh, this look... Oh, crap, I... Yeah, it's okay. When you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's Pop. <laughs> What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. You can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? That was me, actually. Because I'm literally the biggest person at the school. There are horses at Colonel Sanders' rise to school. But who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? You've got some nerve on it, so the thing I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever. Heck no. Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are closing close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has, has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Lonnie, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure they'll be back in fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about my, the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Oh no. Excuse me, Lonnie. I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. She's about to take my man and I'm very mad. I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of fine foods. See you inside, Lonnie. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, what's that book? That's that book? It looks like bad news. I'm talking about what's that book? It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really that powerful? I mean, if it weren't really powerful. I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use a spell here that says it'll erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. She's gonna get, she's gonna get rid of her memories of Colonel Sanders. That's just so messed up. That is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger. Okay, fine. It is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Is he gonna erase her memory of Colonel Sanders? What? You got a memory erasing spell book right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. She can't do that. That's messed up. Okay, don't do it. Obviously, do not do it. You take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice and makes a quick announcement. I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. He must be hungry. Reach for some old homework and give it to him as a snack. Dogs can be unpredictable, especially sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. I'm gonna see what happens. I don't want to see him homework. Sprinkles stops in his tracks. She focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at this girl outside. That is so cute. 
Terrence, I told you to never come back here, Terrence. I will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off of his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You'd better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to a professional tone. Ahem. I apologize for the outburst. That actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Lonnie, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see. But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by worries and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. <laughs> oh, no, he's crying. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Or, aww, they're fighting. But no, you had to show off to your cool friends, Jeff and, um, Joanne, or Joan. J and J forever. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Biz, biz, oh, come on. Biz, biz, yep. Yeah, well, that doesn't make, that doesn't make it a great date. Beep, whirr. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Sad beep. Oh, this is so sad. Clank begins to shudder. Steam points out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. <gasps> beep. Oh my god, is he okay? No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that, Clank. <laughs> Clank burps out a completely deep red sneaker. Considering that he himself has wheels, not feet, it is not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend that they didn't see that entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the giant uh, over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't be distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition showdown challenge exam, TM. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey Miriam, are you okay? Okay? I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug selling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her honey cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is just a silly, is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. You're not going to style up on Col um, Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a branch big enough for both of us and whoever else you want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet the professor dog is going to love it up. Love it up? While you were pep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend the time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early and practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will. A test of courage. A test of talent. And a chance to get the pants off that 
off Van Van and the supposed Man Man and his evil, eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Lonnie's famous chicken pot pie. <gasps> Yum. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Lonnie, what are you doing here? You're still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake, and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. You'd usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, you lost a cook-off. Yeah, it's okay. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes up behind you. I'm gonna fess up. If I just ignore it, it's, it's very obviously gonna be fake. I have to let my dog out. Yo. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pop pop from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell. Not just pot pie, pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? Haha, <laughs> no. I can smell that it was made from a, with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second if you don't just pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I always loved country cooking and I could eat it, eat this all day. There's no time left. The final shutdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese, plus the pot pie you've been practicing, are just the dishes that'll put, push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several set of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big, go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect. His original recipe, for fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts at a, at full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool specific cook, really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates to the air. Egg wash, egg wash, egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients in an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend bastard, bastard, ba what? Best friend bastard, blaster. Van Van flexes his pectoral pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. This is so cringy. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Click gets in on it. Five dollar pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? It's the singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self-destruct. Man Man quickly unplugs Clank. He unplugged him? And rolls him out the back door of the arena. As you frantically, as you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own, and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? I'm not casting a spell. I'd be messed up. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. 
Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. Oh my god. Guys, he winked at me. This is revolutionary. I believe in you, Lonnie. Oh my god, thank you. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Lonnie, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food? Short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your broiling noodles. It's a secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up. And where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? <gasps> no! She put Eye of Newt in my food. The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve? What happened to Borka? You're not here to battle me, are you? We Spork Monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off. But you have conjured Steve, and I hate battle, so I say you're doing pretty alright. Oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff, it's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Aw. Steve, the spark monster, notices that you've got the grimoire stashed beneath the cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross the magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Haha, <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was a little spork pup, back in the old country. You can feel spork monster winding up to tell a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. Oh, I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class, and when I woke up, you tossed a serious look at Steve, and he takes the hint. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know if you how you could ever win. <laughs> I about the choice to drop out of culinary school? No, extra power from deep down within myself. I can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns back and she's orange as culinary energy flows through your body. Ew. My heart is pure, my hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Lonnie, you're the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you'd, you've been summoning immediately fades back out. Oh, gosh. You're interrupted by inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. <laughs> what? I begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through my body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful, because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, you may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Absolutely. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass your individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, student. With time expired, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop, clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Heh <laughs> it's flying! It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside of the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hooked by the elastic of his underpants. <laughs> Oof. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess. Did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? 
I thought a wedgie was a salad. I love how Pop eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. Oh, I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. Y yep. No problem. Uh, my dog back, and I'll be right back. Your kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in our history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks, pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure crack roll off to? You wait to hear a signature word, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's none. Wait, shoot. <laughs> Somehow you must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it's been a long semester. Wow, three whole days. And after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now, describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and a savory soup. Oh my god, it's so adorable. My word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny um, narutamaki I spy afloat in this itsy bitsy bowl? Yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles. And some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, it was less than a thimble worth of soup. A plus, rarely do I taste the dishes with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Lonnie, for helping me to believe in myself. You got it. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made ugh, uni over a smooth egg custard and an axe um, hone, hewn, hone, urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Wait. Ah. Yes, yeah, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is my kind of branch. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in and sniffs the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof. Seems gentle with my cuisine. Grrr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Youch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. Oh my god. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. Disqualified. <gasps> a stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of noodles could make it difficult to eat? Rejected Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount the... Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student. Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight and a light rose water syrup. Topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. Ugh, that is so extra. That actually doesn't sound too bad. 
Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking show. Got toast in your ears or something, Lonnie? I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say, it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it, too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I would go to the College of Eating, School for the Hungry. Dot, dot, dot. I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted. But don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. This girl is stupid. An absolute buffoon. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be a fake nice, trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me, either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. Oh my gosh, yes. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I could everything in this kitchen, you give me this, this thing. And completely blow me away. In my, 49 do in my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. You pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. It's like Oprah, haha. <laughs> everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to, to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The menu item, the new menu item is so impressive, even the Van Van, Van and Ashley are drawn back in by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. There were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. Oh my gosh, fun! The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, this, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. Aww, DJ Dog is in the house! Ow, ow, ow! Aww, he is adorable. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting, because the student's here now. No ghost allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. That's so mean. They're going to make them leave? Oh. I was never actually a ghost. It was all a trick to get you to notice me. What? Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, it's the Spork Monster. He has totally mellowed out. Everyone, the Spork Monster is no more. From here out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. A student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to Spork. Sorry, Party Monster. Ejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for- I love that outfit! Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking, and you know that she was going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma. So we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's dean. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school. Not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. 
The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electrical hissing, um, hissing and sparking. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Or are we still doing the talking thing? I am Clank, and I'm not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? That's crazy. I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? What? I don't know what to say. Besides, no, obviously. I've just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figure out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Oh, look at his a t-shirt. That's so cute. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to g just give him a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. <laughs> I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. Whoa, look at that. Coleslaw and mashed potatoes, a big bucket of chicken and biscuits. The end question mark? Aww. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Lonnie, what are you doing sitting all alone? How are you? Ah, I'm right You know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. Oh my god, this is so cute. I wonder, Matt, you tell me, what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? <laughs> Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Oh my god, they're gonna dance, this is so cute. Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. Oh my god. And once my... Once my 100th franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off, and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Lonnie. Oh my god! How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Aww. Work together. Well, um, I think this is something I'll just need to do by myself. Aww, but who will help you? Blah, 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 blah. Um, but who will help you run your restaurants? Casual Colonel. Yes. <laughs> he looks so cute. I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Lonnie, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. Along the way, he'll have you by, by your side. The end. Ah, oh, that's- is that really it? Oh my god. Yeah, that's it. Oh my god. That's crazy, dog. Dang. That was good. That was so fun. Yeah, that's it. Just the three days at the culinary school. Hold on, I'm gonna look up the different endings. Um. I wonder if there's different endings or not, because she's not going to help him run the restaurants, but she's gonna, she is going to date him.
Ew, ew, that is the grossest thing I've ever read in my life. Oh, maybe it has to do with all finding all 11 ingredients. So I only saw um, 11. Dang, I thought there'd be a bit more. I guess um, there may be more paths, but it seems like it was fast. Only two and a half hours. Yeah. Also, sorry, I didn't chat much at times. I was doing some other stuff with the stream on. No, 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 it's fine. There's also a bad ending if you do all the bad choices. So I got the good ending, that was bad. Um, and there's a truly slash secret ending with by doing all the best choices, which is finding as many secret spices as you can. Cute. That's such a cute game. I love that. Oh, wait, don't. Oh, crap. That's so fun. <laughs> I need to understand what all these emotes actually mean because that one's just weird. Huh. I guess that's it. Um, yeah. Dang, I got such a small amount of viewers near the end. It was like three for at least like 40 minutes. Oh well. Oh, number two. It's just Lance and um, Fletch. Dude, at this point, I would feel quite. It's quite depressing to raid with two viewers. <laughs> Hold on. Ugh. It's good though, maybe. I don't know. Should I? Who's streaming right now? If you guys both went, then I wouldn't mind, but... I wouldn't do, like... I didn't just see because she's at 24, so that'd just be weird. But Delirious Wisdom is at Genshin. She's doing Genshin Impact. And then. I'll probably do Delirious Wisdom because I actually have watched her once. Sure, I'm gonna raid this person just for fun. I mean, if only one of you joins, then I won't because that'd be depressing. But if I do, um, if you both go, then that'd be fine. Frick. Cool. That emote can mean multiple things. Yeah. <laughs> That's, mm hmm yep, that's a funky one. Oh, hello. Hey, you should join the uh, raid. We're just ending. Why just three? Join the raid, please, I'll do anything. <laughs> Bro. Danny, join the raid. There's a join button. Ugh, fine. I like the Valentine's Day emotes. Oh, that's so cute. I love them. Dude, why isn't he joining? Did you just say hi and then leave? Because it only says two people. These two, especially. Yeah, those are adorable. I love them. That's really cute. Oh, that one's so adorable. What is that dessert called? Oh, he's not joining the raid. That's too bad. Yeah, I guess I'll just let it raid once the uh 
Once the thing runs out. Yeah, I guess he just left. He joined and then left again. Okay. Um, because it only says two viewers. So, yeah. Um, thank you for watching. I'll be playing again tomorrow at four. I'm playing these four games from one of these studios. And they're all horror games. I think they're pretty short. So, I'm going to do like four in the amount of time that I stream for. And it's going to be pretty cool, I got to say. So come say for that, 4 p.m. Central Time, or whatever time zone you're in. Just look it up in the bottom where the uh, schedule is, and it's going to be in your time zone. But thank you for watching, and I will be back tomorrow. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. Bro. If, uh... Here, if you just... Um... Oh, well, I don't, really know how... I don't know what you're on, so I can't really explain it to you. There should just be a button that says join. I have a little icon with like a cat on it because that's our profile picture. And then it'll say rating delirious wisdom and it'll be a join button. You know what's going on? Your phone just had an update. Ah, oh, that's all right. Yeah, no, um, that's a rip, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm going to just rate it. Sorry. Sorry, it's not working out for you. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Be back tomorrow. Um, yep. See ya. Hold on, I gotta watch the raid real quick. so much for the raid. Uh, you are epic. Thank you so much. Thank you for the shout out, Jared. I appreciate you. <laughs> yep. Yay! I did a thing. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Lancelot. How are you? Nani? 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 <laughs> yeah, it's okay, Jared. I'm fine. Ooh. So, what were you streaming? And how are you? How was your stream? KFC 